Yo, what's up guys? Joey here, back at it again with another RTX build. This is the second RTX build here on the channel. We're gonna be working with the 2070 in this video and we're gonna be pairing it with the i5-9600K. All right guys, you know how we do it here. We're gonna be breaking the video down into three parts. First part, gonna go over all the parts and their prices and we're gonna jump right into the building process, teaching you guys how to build it step by step. Second, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install Windows 10 and any necessary drivers you need. And then finally, the third part, we're gonna actually be playing games in real time. All right, guys, it's going to be a very long video. I'm going to jump right into it. So this motherboard right here is rocking the Z390 chipset. So we paid $175 for our motherboard. Now, this is part of the ASUS Prime series of motherboards. They've come a long way in this new generation. They now added RGB LEDs right here and right here on the motherboard, which are customizable to any color, obviously. So that's really cool. This motherboard's rocking seven USB ports. You're going to want to get this out of your motherboard box, the JFP1 tool, our SATA cables, and our IO shield. So we paid $260 for our i5. It has a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a turbo of 4.6 gigahertz. All right guys, so to install our CPU into the motherboard socket, line up the golden arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the motherboard, which is located right here. And then we're just gonna lift this to the side lift it up, line up both together. Don't push it in, just let it drop. It should fall right into place just like that. We don't wanna bend our pins, so don't push down on it. Then up and over push it back down and tuck it in. Boom, CPU installed. So to core our CPU, we're gonna be using the ETS T50. It's gonna match our theme really well. That's a clean looking heatsink if you ask me. 55 bucks is what we pay for it. All right guys, first step to install our CPU heatsink is we're gonna be working with this plate. This side for Intel should be facing up and we're gonna be putting four of these screws through the middle right here. We're gonna be securing it into place with this little rubber piece. We're then gonna line it up with the bottom of the motherboard. So then to secure this thing, we're gonna be using these four things. We're gonna be placing this on top of it. When lining it up, just make sure it goes through the middle hole. It should look like that and do the same thing for the other one. And then finally to secure it onto place, we're gonna be using these little things. Now remove the fan and the other piece from the heatsink. We're then gonna finally be lining it up with the two points and then screwing it on. First, be sure to remove the wrap on the bottom and we're gonna to need to add thermal paste first. This is Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste I'm gonna be using. So we're gonna to wanna to put a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of the CPU. Now when lining it up, just make sure the fan side is on the right-hand side. I'm gonna do each side little by little. So a screwdriver with an average length is not long enough to secure this. So I'm using a Milwaukee 150 millimeter screwdriver. So you know you're done tightening it when it actually just stops turning and there and this right here changes the lighting effects of our actual fan and then the other cables to power the fan we're going to be plugging it into our motherboard where it's labeled cpu fan which is right here should look just like that that looks good this little lighting effect controller i'll just have it chill up here put the air guide back on so for our ram guys we went with the backwards corsair vengeance lpx 16 gigs two sticks of eight gigabytes rated at 3000 megahertz 120 bucks is what we paid for it so, so to install our ram we're going to want to open up the second and the fourth ram slot and how i line it up is i just stick it through the back first a little bit and then line it up with the front side and then just push it down and it should clip up like that and then we do the same thing for the other one Make sure you guys remove the plastic wrap on the motherboard. We have some right here as well. Actually, they put it all over this thing. It's a lot of wrap. And last one. All right, guys, so now we're gonna be sticking our motherboard into our case. We went with the Spec 06. This is the RGB version, so the front's gonna light up real dope looking. So first thing we're gonna be doing is sticking the IO shield in the backside of our case. So we're gonna line it up like this. Just make sure it clips in. So when installing our motherboard inside our case, we just wanna make sure that all our points on the motherboard, we have nine of them for this one, line up with the nine motherboard standoffs inside our case. With this case, they're already all in the appropriate position. Three down here, three in the middle, and three on top. So what I do first is line up the back motherboard parts with the IO shield, and then I just make sure the motherboard sits in with this one. This is the only motherboard standoff that doesn't need to be screwed in, and yeah, that'll hold your motherboard into place. So on the back side of our case where our drive cages is where we're gonna find our screws and other tools. I'm gonna be using these screws right here to secure our motherboard. 
So moving on to our power supply guys, we went with a 600 watt bronze rated. How much we paid for it? 58 bucks. So if we take a look at the back of our power supply, they're labeled. We have VGA, Perif, and SATA. So we're gonna be using our VGA cable. This is gonna power our graphics card. We're not gonna be using the Perif cable, so just get that out of the way. But we are gonna be hooking up both of the SATA cables. The SATA cables are gonna be hooked up to our SSD and our hard drive, it's gonna power them. We then have these two, which are already connected to the power supply. The big 24 pin one is gonna power our motherboard and this one's gonna power our CPU. So we're gonna have the fan facing down and we're gonna just put it in through here and we're securing it with the screws that came with the power supply. All right guys, so now we're gonna be plugging in a lot of these cables. When building a PC, we have two sets of cables, all the cables from our power supply and then all the cables from our case. The case cables are gonna connect our power switch, our USB ports, our microphone and headphone jack and our reset button to the actual motherboard. So let's go ahead and get the case cables out of the way first. Our HD audio cable is gonna be hooked up where it's labeled AAFP on our motherboard and the HD audio text is gonna be facing up. Our USB 3.0 cable is gonna hook up right here. Now to plug in our switches, we're gonna be using the little tool that came included with our motherboard. So everything's labeled guys, so just go ahead and match up everything with what it needs to be matched up with. So there's positive and negative LED. And when I flip it over, the reset switch hooks up right there. Flipping it around again, our power switch hooks up right next to our power LED. And now we're gonna be plugging it in. It should look like that. So now to power our CPU, I'm gonna be wiring the cable up through here. So as you can see guys, this cable has a clip. When hooking it up to the input, we wanna make sure that the clip part is on the top side. And it should look like that. Both sides should clip on top. So for this cable, it's actually separated. Just connect both of these things and then plug it in. So moving on to our drives, a 500 gigabyte SSD to boot up Windows 10, 73 bucks. And then a two terabyte hard drive to store our games. So first we're gonna be attaching our hard drive to this thing and now we could put it in our drive cage. So we plug two cables into our hard drive, the SATA power cable. So one of the ends of the SATA data cable that came with our motherboard hooks up to the hard drive and then the other end hooks up to the motherboard. So we're gonna be doing the same thing for our SSD. It also has the same ports, but first I'm gonna be covering it with some hot pink vinyl wrap to match our theme. So this case supports up to two SSDs right here, but I like to have our SSDs on display in the front of the case. So in order to do that, I'm gonna be using double-sided tape and then I'm gonna be wiring the cables through here. So in case you guys also want to do this, I'll go ahead and link the double-sided tape in the video description. And of course, don't forget to hook up the other end of the SATA cable to the motherboard. So our case has two fans, guys. One right here and then one back there. They need to be powered. So I'm going to be wiring their cables through the back of the case and then plugging them in right here. And I already did it. We're also gonna be adding not one, but three RGB LED strips. So when connecting any RGB LED device to the motherboard, just make sure that the arrow lines up with the 12 volt pin. So taking a closer look at the MSI Armor RTX 2070, I've always admired the Armor editions of the cards because yeah, it's pretty much always a black and white color. The black plate looks really nice on this one. They really upped their game. MSI logo and silver looks dope. Right here, dope. Just really love this card. As far as the ports, one HDMI port, three display ports, one Type-C port. Holding it up to our system, I mean, it just, it matches so perfectly. In order to make room for our graphics card, we want to remove the second and the third expansion slots. And now just push this thing to the back and we're just gonna be clipping it in. Now we gotta power the 2070. We're gonna be using an eight pin and then just a six pin so you could get rid of this thing. I then just kind of train the cable by just trying to bend it here so it could just look cleaner. So to power the lights in front of our case, we're just gonna be hooking up the SATA power cable of the case to one of the SATA power inputs of our power supply. So I'll put Spider Gwen on top. Ah, Miles, chill down here. Ta-da. So yeah, guys, we have three RGB LED strips going, motherboard LEDs, heatsink LEDs, graphics card LEDs. All right, guys, time to get everything installed now. So we're gonna need a USB flash drive that has a bootable ISO of Windows 10. I made a video on how to do this. That's linked in the video description, or of course, you can just buy one. So I plugged in the USB flash drive, and I'm gonna turn on our PC. It's all now. So if you wanna run Windows 10 for free, you're gonna click that you don't have a product key. 
next. When you don't activate Windows, it will still function like the activated version of Windows, except you're gonna have a watermark on the bottom right hand side of the screen telling you to activate Windows. If that annoys you, you purchase a product key, enter it and it'll go away. I'm gonna be installing Windows 10 Pro next. When we arrive here, we're gonna wanna select custom install so we could choose the drive we wanna install Windows 10 onto. I'm gonna be selecting our SSD next. So once we arrive here, guys, it's pretty much gonna ask us to pick a region, a password and a username for our computer. I'm gonna be connecting to the internet with this USB Wi-Fi adapter. So we're now gonna be installing our graphics card drivers using the GeForce Experience program. All the stuff that we're gonna be installing will be linked in the video description. As soon as you sign into the program, it immediately starts downloading the latest driver. So we're then gonna be clicking express installation and then just let it do its thing. So now we're gonna be downloading our motherboard drivers. The first driver I'm gonna be downloading is the audio one and I'm gonna be saving it to my desktop. Next driver is the LAN driver. If you're gonna be connecting to the internet using a wired ethernet connection, you're gonna to wanna to download this driver. And then the last driver is gonna be the ASUS Aura program, which allows us to control the lighting inside our PC. When we download our drivers, they're gonna be zipped. You're gonna to wanna to unzip them by right clicking and then selecting extract all. Then we're just gonna click extract. We're gonna do this for all three drivers we installed. And then once the folder opens up, you're gonna click the setup process and then proceed with the installation. As you can see, when I clicked the Ethernet driver, nothing came up. It automatically installed it. So we're done with that. Some drivers are like that. Moving on to the next one. All right, it extracted and opened up automatically. Select the setup process. So when you click the audio driver, you just gotta wait for this process to finish. So for our Intel LAN driver, when we clicked it, nothing popped up. But when we click our lighting program, something is gonna pop up and then you just click next, next, next. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because sometimes someone may click the LAN driver and then since nothing pops up, you may think it crashed or didn't do its job, but it did, it already installed itself. So if we go over to this PC, only our SSD shows up right now. We wanna go ahead and assign a drive letter to our hard drive so then it could show up and we could install games on it. So we're gonna to wanna to go to our search bar and type in hard disk. We're gonna be selecting create and format. And right here, this will automatically pop up and we're gonna be selecting GPT and just click okay. So here's our hard drive. We're just gonna be right clicking it and selecting new simple volume. Next, next. We're gonna assign a drive letter to it. I'm just gonna pick D, next. 2 terabyte hard drive, next, finish. And now if we go back to this PC, it will now pop up. So when installing any game like Rainbow Six Siege, we're gonna wanna navigate to our hard drive. Right now, I want to install it onto our SSD. We're gonna be selecting our D drive. We're gonna be making a new folder to stay organized. Steam library is fine, okay, select, and then next. And now the game is being installed onto the hard drive. I'm gonna go ahead and now change the lighting of the PC to just one solid color. So in here, as you can see, there's an endless list of effects. I'm just gonna be selecting static, which is still apply. All right, so that's red. That looks really nice, actually. Let's go for a bluish color. Oh my goodness, that's bright. On the camera, it looks very overexposed, but in real life, it looks purplish apply. Oh my God hot pink reddish apply okay guys so now the last thing i'll be showing you guys how to do is making sure your ram is running at its rated speed remember our ram is rated for 3000 megahertz we want to make sure it's running at that so how we're going to be doing that is we're going to restart our pc you want to keep clicking delete so we can boot up to the bios and we're going to be going over to advanced mode but first if you take a look over here our memory is currently running at 2100 megahertz so advanced mode we're going to go over to ai tweaker and we're going to be selecting xmp don't worry, it's not gonna do any changes to the CPU. Yes, we then go over to exit, save changes and reset, and it'll tell us all the changes it's made and click okay. So the computer will now restart. We're then gonna boot up to our desktop and as soon as the games are done downloading, you're ready to start playing. All right, here we go, guys. We're playing Rainbow Six Siege now. We're playing it at the ultra settings graphics preset at 1080p resolution. One up. Yo, could you put the cinnamon rolls in the oven, please? One for me, one for you. Four oh one p.m. Right. All right, boys. Let's do this. Whoa. Oh, we threw a grenade. Oh, I got just killed by Tachanka. Tachanka. Back right corner. How did I? Ah, four.
All right, let's do this, guys. Deagle time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Why are you bullying me? Oh, yo, this is a lucky. Oh. I was gonna say that's a lucky chicken. Nope. Uh -huh. Oh, that was close. All right, how many are we gonna get? We were playing Overwatch on the Ultra Settings preset. Thank you. So we're playing the game right now at 1080p resolution maxed out uh, ultra settings. I'm going to go ahead and turn down our shadows to medium now. Apply. Got a bit more FPS. Closer to 144. No! Oh my god. That scared me. <laughs> Stop. Okay, got one. Oh, he's on the balloon. Oh, I got him. Wait, so it, so it could boost me then. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and lower it to high now, but I'm going to keep the distance at epic. Apply. It's actually kind of the same FPS. A little, well, actually, no, that's a lot more. Oh, wow. Man, it fluctuates like crazy. Let's see though what it takes to play Fortnite at 244 FPS. Supposed processing, low effects, low, anti-aliasing, medium, shadows, off, black. There we go. We're in the 200s now. Oh, I got one. Oh shoot, someone right there. Oh. Where is he? <laughs> Alright, he's down. One more. Got him both! Yes! Alright guys, so check it out. This was actually my first win. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching. If you watched to the end, I really appreciate it. Next build is the RTX 2060. If you want to know as soon as that comes out, turn on bell notifications. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next PC build. Peace. <laughs> so, I'ma get it all up in my head. White t-shirt, blue jeans. I can never get